A few years ago, during an interview with Jordan Peterson for the Aspen Institute, Barry Weiss said, I don't think it's a stretch to say that you are sort of the most loved and loathed uh, public intellectual in the Western world at the moment. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Why does the radical left hate Jordan Peterson? For those of us who are familiar with Jordan Peterson's work, it seems almost crazy that there is so much hatred against him, since he is an incredibly intelligent, measured, and reasonable man. And to be fair, I think the people who hate him are a small minority that just happen to be incredibly incredibly loud and mobilized. I'm not talking about people who disagree with him, which I'm sure many people do. I'm specifically talking about hate, like protesting him, trying to get him cancelled, fired, demonetized, and silenced in general. I would categorize these people as generally belonging to the radical left, which includes Marxists, postmodernists, and most importantly, the identity politics players. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that leftists or liberals or centrist democrats fall under this category by any means. So now that I've gotten the definitions out of the way, let's get started on why the radical left hates Jordan Peterson. Before we do though, if you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you. I think the most obvious place to start is that Peterson does not pander to people. I would say for the last 45 years, we've told psychologists have been, have been certainly to blame for this, at least in part, you're okay the way you are. That's what we tell young people. Oh, you're okay the way you are. It's like, and there's nothing worse than you can tell, that you can tell someone who's young than that, especially if they're miserable. This way of speaking is in direct contrast with the rise of positivity of the focus on improving people's self-esteem by telling them that they are perfect, or in cases of women, telling them that they are goddesses and queens. Now, there's nothing wrong with being positive and supportive, but it can't come at the cost of growth or honesty. Oh, I'm miserable and aimless, and sometimes I'm suicidal and I'm nihilistic and I don't have any direction in your life. It's in my life. It's like, well, you're okay the way you are here. And it's like, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear, look, you know, you're, and you know this, you're useless. You know nothing. You haven't got started. You've got 60 years to put yourself together, and God only knows what you could become. That message is so much more, it's so funny because it's so, it's such an attack, but it's so positive because there's faith there in the, in the potential that makes up the person rather than the miserable actuality that happens to be manifesting itself at the moment. And young people respond extraordinarily well to that. And that's not to say that there isn't any need for positive feedback and support. There absolutely is. The way psychologists have broken it apart is the concept of paternal and maternal love. Maternal love is you're perfect just the way you are. Positive impact of that is the feeling of support and love. But in excess, the negative impact of that is is stagnation since you're not being challenged out of your current state. The paternal love is I know you can be better. I believe in you. The positive impact of this is that needed push to grow and evolve. But in excess, the negative impact is a feeling that nothing is ever good enough. And even though I'm using the phrases of maternal and paternal, it's not gender role specific. And it's not specific to a parent-child relationship either. This applies to all types of relationships. And Peterson represents the I know you can be better voice, which is why people who have struggled with depression and suffering are drawn to his message because it gives them that push and figure out a way to be better, and as Peterson would say, put their house in order. This is in complete disagreement with the radical left's position of, if you're part of our tribe, then you are perfect. You don't need to change. It's the world that needs to change, and we're going to force it to change, because the world owes us. This belief means that people within the far left movements feel that when they're faced with unhappiness, it's not because of their own actions, but rather the unfair structure of society. For example, why do the rich have all the money? Why do the men have all the top jobs. Now, that's not to say that there aren't problems in society that need to be fixed, but an overemphasis of blaming society means that there's no room to look within. And this brings me to the second reason that the radical left hates Jordan Peterson, and that's because he does not play into victim narratives. A good example of this is the belief that the wage gap between men and women is caused by systemic sexism and the patriarchy. This was one of the main topics of discussion during Peterson's sit-down with Channel 4's Kathy Newman in 2018. Multivariate analysis of the pay gap indicate that it doesn't exist. 
But that's just not true, is it? I mean, that 9% true. pay gap, that's a gap between median hourly earnings yeah. between men and women. But there's that multiple, exists. Yeah, but there's multiple reasons for that. One of them is gender, but it's not the only reason. Watching this little clip, you might be wondering why it seems like Newman isn't really listening and why she's hell-bent on misrepresenting what Peterson is saying. I'll come back to the misrepresentation later, but perpetuating victim narratives, making claims that large groups of people are oppressed or mistreated is an overly simplistic view. It's like saying we have a huge homelessness problem in America because homeless people are lazy. That statement is an inaccurate and oversimplified view of a very complex problem. And that's Peterson's argument here, that when it comes to the gender pay gap, while sexism may play a role in that, it is a far more complex problem with multiple causes, many of which people don't want to acknowledge, like differences between men and women in temperament and interests. But for the radical left, the acknowledgement that the pay gap is not caused primarily by sexism and an unyielding, unfeeling patriarchy means giving up the very attractive status of victim. Now, we've talked about this in previous videos, that the status of victim or defender of the victim is very attractive because it gives a person or a group of people the right to anger and retribution. Because as they would put it, they're fighting for justice for the downtrodden. But Peterson's pushback is that a problem cannot be properly solved unless you clearly understand the cause. And I would argue that the left extremists are not really trying to solve particular problems in society, which is why they're not really interested in listening and discussing the real causes of the problem. What they're trying to do is use problems to establish their power. And their strategy for increasing their power is to convince more and more people that they are oppressed, that they fall into the victim category. And in order to win or succeed in life, they need to band together with the rest of the radical left. This is what people call tribalism, where the tribe is considered more important than the individual. And this brings me to the third reason for why the radical left hates Peterson, and that is his defense of the individual. I'll let him explain since he'll do a far better job than I ever could. We actually value the individual, right? The individual has intrinsic value in Western societies. Do you know how long it took people to formulate that as an idea? And how unlikely that idea is that poor you, you know, useless, powerless you, with all your damn faults, you're actually worth something. You're worth something to the point that the law has to respect you. God, we don't want to abandon that for some half-witted collectivism, which we're doing as rapidly as possible, because one of the things that characterizes the radical left types is they don't give a damn about you as an individual or about individuals at all. You're black or you're white, or you're Latino or you're transsexual, or you're homosexual or whatever. You're a group, you're a member of a group, and the only thing that matters is the group. Well, I can tell you, if the only thing that matters is the group, you bloody well don't matter very much. And then you gotta ask yourself just exactly what sort of people are trying to set things up so it is that the individual doesn't matter very much. Well, it's the sort of people to whom the individual doesn't matter very much. And I might suggest that you don't elect them and that when they attempt to take power that you do everything you can to stop them. But the extreme left finds a lot of power in creating tribalism because that means they have the power of numbers. So naturally, they don't want people listening to Peterson and understanding the importance of valuing the individual over the tribe. Now, there are a lot more reasons that the radical left hates Peterson, and I will probably do a part two. If you're interested in that, please let me know in the comments because this video is already getting very long. To end this video, I want to talk about the strategy that the extreme left has incorporated to combat Peterson, and that is misrepresentation. I'm sure many of you have heard Peterson being called a racist, a sexist, a bigot. And all of these terms are used to ensure that people will hear that, and then they will never listen to a word that Peterson has ever said, and write him off as someone unworthy of consideration. Examples of that are Decca Eichenhead from The Times accusing Peterson of toxic masculinity, or Kathy Newman trying to corner Peterson into a cancelable moment. The things that predict success in the workplace are intelligence and conscientiousness. Agreeableness negatively predicts success in the workplace. So and so does high that, negative emotion. You're saying that women aren't intelligent enough to run these top companies? No, I didn't say that at all. You said that... This is the experience that Brittany King, a former BLM member, had as she shared on her own YouTube channel as well as on a podcast with Brett Weinstein. I learned about Jordan Peterson after the controversy. I had no clue who this man was. Didn't know he was a controversial figure at all. I just came upon a panel he was on and he specifically just stood out. 
because I was like, wow, he's really challenging um, me, not necessarily on race issues, just by critically thinking like that is like really insightful how he is thinking about these things and reframing things. I never would have saw that way. And it makes perfect sense now. So I kept listening to him and listening. And then I stumbled across a controversy that says he's a transphobic white supremacist. And I was like, I'm like, wait, let me see if I put that in Google, right? Cause I don't think that's what they, that's not the same man. And I'm like, what? So then I was watching those videos of people, you know, calling him that and chanting him and shutting lectures of his down protesting. And I watched the C-16 bill all the way through and him, and I was just like, but I would have been those people too it, before. I would have went with the mob. And the fact that I, these people are so off and the fact that I was so off on things too, I think Britney's experience is incredibly important to highlight because it shows the importance of hearing the other side and challenging and stress testing your own beliefs rather than continuing to stay within our own thought bubbles. It's a comfortable place, but growth only happens when you look beyond what you think you know. So there you have it. Those are some of the reasons for why the radical left hates Jordan Peterson and how they're trying to silence him. Since this video is already long, I'm going to stop here, but I'm going to quickly mention the many future topics I'd like to discuss from here because there's just so much more to talk about. Number one, dogmatism. Why people lock onto their beliefs and struggle to hear opposing views. Number two, the rise of narcissism in society and how Jordan Peterson is the antidote. Very excited to do this one. And number three, why are people so attracted to the ideas of Marxism? So let me know which topics interest you in the comments. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, a big thank you to my patrons. Thank you and I'll see you next time.